everyone, I'm Jeev Nahegde. And I'm Diak Filio. And we're both customer engineers at Google Cloud. And we're so glad to have you back to another episode of Technical Guide for Startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to start, build, and grow your businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous video, we talked about Compute Engine and how to configure it appropriately. Now we're on the sixth episode, Networking Configurations. Let's dive in. In this video, we're going to understand Google's global network, do an overview of VPC networking, firewall rules, and load balancing, and understand these concepts better with a few quick demonstrations based on the instances we deployed in our previous Compute with Google Compute Engine video. If you haven't watched that, please do check it out. We've linked it in the description box below. We will then go over a customer success story and wrap up with some actionable next steps. So without any further ado, let's get right on to the video. For the past 15 years, Google has been building out one of the fastest, one of the most powerful and one of the most highest quality cloud infrastructures on the planet. Google runs its own data center to data center high throughput fiber backbone and traffic travels as far as possible on Google's own network. And the result is a global network connecting our data centers to each other and to all the major cities across the globe. Think about it, this network is so reliable that for many people, checking to see if they can get to google.com is how they test their home network. Most cloud providers use what's called hot potato routing. This is when you're sending out traffic from their infrastructure, they offload it to the public internet as soon as possible. This is like a hot potato that they want to get off their hands. Google Cloud as well provides this option in the standard networking tier. But we also do things differently. In Google Cloud's premium networking tier, we use something called the cold potato routing technique, where we keep that traffic on Google Cloud's private network for as long as possible and exit it to the public internet at the location closest to the end user, usually in the same town or city. This enables us to offer you with better reliability, better performance and more security. And this is possible due to the Google's global network we've been talking about. The big benefits being high performance, reduced latency and superior network quality, leading to a delightful user experience. Hence, the premium tier is the recommended and default tier, as it delivers your traffic over Google's global backbone network. This global network also paves way to some unique features like global load balancing, CDN and more. We'll cover some of these as we go. Coming up next, VPC networking. A VPC, or Virtual Private Cloud, is your virtual global network in Google Cloud. As you can see from this image, they are created within projects and are made up of subnets, which are regional. VPCs enable private communication between Google Cloud regions natively, allowing you to keep a fault-tolerant and highly available network by default. When creating a VPC in the Google Cloud Console or through the Cloud SDK, you can choose from two custom subnet creation modes, Auto Subnet Mode, which creates a subnet for each of Google Cloud's existing regions, or Custom Subnet Mode, which allows you to create a subnet for each of the regions you'd like. Creating a VPC with Custom Subnet Mode is our recommended best practice. Let's take a look at how to create a VPC. Log on to the Google Cloud Console, select the list view of Google products, and open VPC Network. Notice that there is already a network created called Default, which spans all regions and is of type Auto Subnet Mode. Let's now create a new network using Custom Subnet Mode. Select Create VPC Network, give it an identifiable name, making sure to select Custom under Subnet Creation Mode. In the new subnet box, you'll be able to create multiple subnets. First, choose a name, select a region from the dropdown, and choose a private IP range for this subnet. Turn private Google Access on if you wish to allow VMs in this subnet to communicate with Google APIs without needing external IPs. Then, toggle Flow Logs on if you'd like to see detailed logs for your network traffic. Notice that toggling this on will incur extra costs. Repeat these steps for all the subnets you wish to create in this VPC. 
Finally, choose global if you need to make your newly created subnets available to your on-prem network. If not, leave regional selected. Click Create. Your VPC will be provisioned within seconds. Let's talk a bit about firewall rules. Unlike a traditional firewall, which is a physical appliance filtering traffic between subnets, Google Cloud's firewall rules provide distributed enforcement at the virtual networking level. This means that there is no performance bottleneck or single pointer failure in using our firewall. Firewall rules are included at no extra cost and there are no appliances or operating systems to manage. Essentially, every VPC network functions as a distributed firewall. Finally, you can think of GCP firewall rules as existing not only between your instances and other networks, but also between individual instances within the same network. When creating a firewall rule, you must specify a few configurations. At a basic level, a firewall rule needs a target, which controls the instances to which the rules apply. This can be done by specifying an instance tag, a service account that's attached to your instance, or simply choosing to apply the rule to all the instances. Next, you must choose the direction of traffic the rules apply to, ingress or egress traffic. The rule can then block or allow the predetermined flow of traffic. Finally, you must specify either a source or a destination for the rule to apply to, depending on which direction of traffic you chose. Let's now take a look at the creation of a firewall rule. Let's create a rule that blocks all incoming traffic from the internet. Still on the Google Cloud console, hover over the VPC network and select Firewall. After selecting Create Firewall Rule, choose a name, select which network this rule applies to, and set a priority. Here, a lower number means higher priority, where the highest priority is denoted by zero. Because we're trying to block all incoming traffic from the internet, I'll select Ingress for destination of traffic and deny for action on match. I'll make this rule apply to all instances in the network. And in the source IPv4 ranges, I'll put 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 to represent any and all traffic, including that from the public internet. The firewall rule is ready. So now select create. Another option for the configuration of a firewall rule is to edit a VM instance directly on the Google Cloud console to allow HTTP traffic. On the Instances page, click Edit, check Allow HTTP Traffic, then hit Save. Once the firewall rule is configured, you'll be able to see it in the firewall rules page where its target is denoted as HTTP-Server. On the Instance page, you can see a network tag for this name, HTTP-Server, signifying the relationship between the rule in the instance. In Google Cloud, we offer different flavors of load balancers. On the global side, depending on the traffic, we have load balancers for HTTP, HTTPS, SSL, and TCP. On the regional side, we have network load balancer and HTTPS load balancer, both external and internal facing. External load balancer distribute the traffic coming from the internet to your Google Cloud VPC network. On the other hand, internal load balancers distribute traffic to instances inside your Google Cloud. If your backends are distributed across multiple regions, go for the global cloud load balancing. If not, you can choose from the regional cloud load balancing services. Google Cloud load balancing is built on the same front-end serving infrastructure that powers Google. It supports 1 million plus queries per second with high performance and low latencies. The first picture shows a load balancing in a traditional cloud provider where both the load balancer and the instances sit in the data center. The user request traverses the internet and finally makes its way to the load balancer that's sitting in the data center by a cloud provider. As you can see, the cloud provider has no control over the user experience over the internet, so there is no way to deliver low latency or great user experience. However, it's different with Google's global load balancing. Since the load balancing is at 80 plus points of presence around the world, the user request only traverses the internet for a short period of time until it reaches the closest Google's point of presence or pop. 
Beyond that, the load balancing system at POPS terminates the TCP connection and delivers the request to the service over Google's high-quality global network. The benefits are significant. To name a few, it provides reduced latency and improved throughput for your users. It also helps in serving static cacheable content from multiple points near your users. Now let's go over a demonstration of how to enable external HTTPS load balancer for your application. We're going to take into consideration the application we deployed in our previous video. Go to the Google Cloud Console and your home page opens up. Select Network Services and Load Balancing or simply type Load Balancing in your search and select this. You can see your existing load balancers here and your backend and frontend options here. As we had deployed a backend in our previous video, we see that option listed here. Now let's go ahead and create a load balancer by clicking on Create Load Balancer. You can choose your load balancers to be HTTP, HTTPS load balancer, a TCP load balancer, or a UDP load balancer. We've already gone over this and know that you'll be choosing whether you want them to be internal or external once you start configuring them. Right now, I want to configure an external HTTP, HTTPS load balancer. So let me do that by clicking on Start Configuration for this. So here, I choose whether it's from the internet as an external facing or between my VMs as an internal facing. Like I said, I want this to be external facing, so I'm going to choose from internet. Now give it a name and choose a backend service. You can either create a backend service directly here or choose something that was previously created. Like I'm going to choose the one which I created in the previous video. As you can see, another tab got updated automatically. Let's quickly review this, the host and path rules here which essentially tells you that you can load balance to backend services or cloud storage bucket, which is the object storage option on Google Cloud. And because I picked a backend service, this was updated. For your front-end configuration, assign a name, select whether you want an HTTP or HTTPS protocol, let's just say HTTP, and choose your network tier, like from what we discussed earlier. You can choose whether you want it to be an ephemeral IP, Select the one that was created in the front end in the previous video or choose to create a new one as well. Give it a name and select that. Select your IP version and port number. Let me leave it as is. If nothing is chosen in this section, the defaults are taken. Now in this section, I get to review my configurations. And now click on create. Now if you refresh it, you can see that your load balancer is here. Now that we've created our load balancer, let's quickly test it out. Click on this to get to the load balancer details. Then go to monitoring to see the load balancing. We see this. Now let me go back to the details, pick up the front and external IP address and go to a new tab or window. I've just opened up an incognito window. Here let me put in the IP address. And as you can see, you can see the guestbook application that we had deployed. Now, let me randomly put in some load. Now, let's go back and check our monitoring here. You see that there's load coming in from different continents across the globe to the front end and hitting it and moving to the assigned back end. Now, let me go back and add some intense amount of load again. Let's quickly refresh this. And here you go. You can see that there's so much more load coming in from Asia as opposed to America. And similarly, you can also load balance it further amongst different backends internally and monitor them. So we successfully created and tested our external load balancer, bringing us to the end of this demo. Google Cloud's network is impressive. So let's see what one of our customers built on top of it. Packet Fabric is a private network that provides secure, reliable on-demand services between customers and their cloud service providers, whether private or public. They help their customers automate their network connectivity in order to move their data from one place to another. Packet Fabric leverages Google's network to offer a globally interconnected network as a service platform to its customers. Additionally, Google Cloud's highly performant VPC networking helps Packet Fabric's customers to build, provision, and change their network infrastructure quickly and painlessly. In summary, you're a few clicks away from leveraging Google Cloud's powerful and secure network to run your most exciting and demanding applications. Thank you for joining us on this episode about networking configurations. 
To continue exploring the vastness of Google Cloud networking, check out our suggestions here. And don't hold back on clicking on the links in the description. That brings us to the end of this video. But don't worry, we have some exciting content for you in our upcoming video. In our next video, we're going to look at the big picture of databases for Google Cloud, deep dive into Cloud SQL, and do some demonstrations for Cloud SQL along with some integrations, and learn how to optimize it. We'll also be discussing a sample gaming application architecture and go over a success story of a startup customer. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit on the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. Bye now. See you next time.